Hello, this is the first video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And in this playlist, we're going to go through many of the multivariate techniques. We're not going to prove them theoretically, but we are going to show how to use the techniques and how to interpret the techniques. And so what makes multivariate analysis multivariate? That's when we collect several pieces of information on an individual. For example, per person, you can collect height, weight, hair color, eye color. So we're collecting several pieces of information on an individual, an object, or a unit. And it's the fact that all the objects are collected on a unit generally makes them correlated. And this is what complicates most of multivariate analysis, is that intercorrelation between the variables. If they weren't correlated, we could do univariate analysis on each variable, each endpoint, each and you know, make conclusions that way. But that correlation is really what can complicate things. So let's go through a few examples. Let's look at the test scores for exam ones for all students in a class. Oh, and on a side note, we're going to use the R statistical software to do all of these analysis. And so in these videos, I'm going to provide the code, as always, in the comment section. And, we're, and sometimes I'll go through the code in detail, sometimes I won't. So here we have exam one for 10 students. And the question, is this univariate or multivariate? And the, que and the answer is, it's univariate, because we have one response variable per subject. Now let's add exam two and homework scores into this data frame. And that's our terminology. In this class, we'll often call it a data matrix. And so let's add exam two and homework in this object called students. And now it's clearly multivariate because we have three pieces of information per subject. And so it's multivariate. Now, there are two basic ways to store data. There's actually many, many different ways, but in my mind, there's really two basic ways. One are the rows or the sampling unit. So for in this, in this case, student, and the columns are the different variables of interest or the responses. And that's the way this object stored. Now, if we could take the transpose, and again, that's a matrix algebra terminology, which we'll cover in a later lecture. The columns can be the sampling unit, in this case student 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the rows be the variables of interest, exam 1, exam 2, homework, etc. And, and stored like this. Now these data matrices or data frames are really what's called transpose of each other. And that's this T function in R which we'll cover in detail later. So let's look at another example. So let's look at the test scores for exam one for all students in two different classes. And the question is, is this multivariate or this univariate? And the answer is it's univariate. We have one response variable per, you, per subject. Now, if we collect two pieces of information, so or more, so we add exam two and homework scores for each student in each class, would this be univariate or multivariate? And the answer is it's multivariate, right? Because we have three pieces of information per student. Now notice that class one is stored in object class one and class two information is stored in class two. Now generally, this is not how we store information in multivariate analysis. We have, we collected in one data matrix. And so it would look more like this. And so we just store all the information in one object called students, and this is it. So this is a data frame using R terminology or a data matrix using multivariate analysis nomenclature, right? And then we, we just, it's the same information, but we add a variable called class, which indicates which class the student is in. Same information. Now, what kind of questions can we ask of this data? What would be of interest? Like first thing I think of is what the heck is class? You know, 
class one, class two, are they both the same class? Are they different classes? And clearly, since it's exam one, two, and homework, it's probably, you know, a, a school of some sort. So that's the first thing we need to know. So let's assume they're both applied multivariate analysis courses. What kind of questions can we have? And we have to think multivariately, if that's a word. So univariately, we would say, are exam one scores the same, or are they different between the two classes? Right? We're focusing on one response variable. But here in multivariate, we say, are the mean vectors the same or are they different between the classes? And a vector is a way to, you know, to store several pieces of information in one object. So the mean vector have component one is exam one, component two is exam two, and homework. So collectively, are, is that mean vector the same between the classes? We, we could ask that. Another one would be, can we use homework to, to predict exams scores? Now, in linear regression, we'd say, can homework predict exam one? But here, remember, we're in a multivariate analysis class. Can homework predict this uh, vector of the exam, you know, exam one, two, collectively. Now, also, another thing, we have three pieces of information for each student. What if there's a way that we could combine those scores into one number? And then that one number represents how they did in the class. So maybe we could just add the three scores. That would be one approach. And then that number we could compare between classes. But is there a different way to combine those? Maybe we upweight exams and downweight homework or vice versa. Is there some optimal linear combination of those variables that captures the essence of how they did in a class? So what we're doing there is we're called data reduction. We're trying to reduce the data to a single piece of information instead of having three. Now, if they're different classes, say one's a math class, one's an English class, and assume that student one is the same as student 11. So each student takes both classes, and you'll notice maybe two of the English students didn't take math. But then we can say, how do the mean vectors or a linear combination of these correlate with the you know these variables? How do, you know how well do the English variables correlate with the math variables. And, and those are a few. And so um, the typical things that we're going to look or, you know, examine in this class are multivariate linear regression. So that's predicting two or more response variables. MANOVA. Now, most people have heard of ANOVA, analysis of covariance, but you put an M on it front and it's multivariate analysis of variance where you're comparing mean vectors between populations. Principal components is a data reduction technique. Discriminant analysis and classification, that's separating variables into groups. Classification is where do we put the next observation, which group should they go on, go into based on the information. Canonical correlation is how well two sets of variables correlate with each other, you know, linear combinations of those variables. Cluster analysis or natural groupings. And there maybe a natural grouping here is, you know, maybe the students that score well in English score low in the math scores, or, you know, those that score high in the math, are they low in the English scores? I mean, are there natural groupings in this data? You know, that is cluster analysis. Now, factor analysis is very closely related to principal components, but we try to create factors that help us explain and understand the data more easily. Now that's it for a very brief introduction. Now the next several videos are going to be on matrix algebra. And I say that now in order to talk in any field, you have to have notation, 
and you have to have nomenclature. And the same way with multivariate analysis. And that notation is matrix algebra. And the nomenclature is all the words you know surrounding that. So the next you know five to ten videos will be matrix algebra. And it's so important when we discuss these multivariate techniques that you have a basic understanding of those videos. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.